Well, hey there, just kind of a candid little uh, update uh, to the adoption process. Uh, date is February 26th, 2021. Um, I think I've spoken in the past about um, the uh, hiccup that we experienced with Eli turning 18 and that... Um, putting him into the adult tier uh, instead of the child tier. So we had to do some additional uh, paperwork and such to um, get him into the home study as an adult. Um, it's kind of, <laughs> first of all, it's very frustrating that it's gone on that long that we didn't even really expect Eli to be an adult um, before all this was said and done. Um, but I think in the, in the past, I'm not exactly sure what I said about it, but back in November, late November, um, the Homeland Security caught it <laughs> instead of, uh, either us or our agency. Um, uh, now I'm, I'm a little bit upset with myself for not really thinking about Eli turning in turning to an adult and um, us having to do any any addition to that however um, I'm a little we're a little bit more upset with our agencies for not catching it and not alerting us to having to do additional steps to uh, um, to get him right with the home study so here we are in February um, what the last thing that we had to do was to get Eli fingerprinted at um, Homeland Security downtown Indianapolis. Um, we actually got a notification. Um, we got a notification um, late January that Eli had an appointment to have his fingerprints taken on March. March 1st, I think it was, it's like, oh my goodness, we're, we're not, we're not going to wait an entire month for him to be fingerprinted. So, um, I remember when we had our fingerprints done for Vivian, um, they told us, you know, just go in. Um, they don't even really look at the appointment date. They just process your paperwork. So that's what we did, uh, with Eli. So Eli and I went downtown, I think it was February 8th. Uh, we went downtown and we just said, you know, we're just going to go in and we're going to um, get the fingerprints done and hope they don't look at the uh, appointment date, which is March 1st. So we did and we walked in, they processed his paperwork, uh, they got his fingerprints and we were done. So that morning I went and told our agencies good news we got the fingerprints done basically a month ahead of time um great all right awesome so i guess the procedure at that point was to update eli uh to include all of eli's updates with our entire home study and send it off to uscis to be then reviewed and sent on to uh the u.s embassy well what our agency did, unknowing to us, and we wouldn't have known any different, but they should have known. But what they did was they sent Eli's updated paperwork on to USCIS, up on to, uh, yeah, USCIS. Well, USCIS got this, and, and they say, well, if we send this on to the U.S. Embassy, they are not going to know what to do with it. Just this partial version of the home study. So um, they kicked it back to us. So here we are. <laughs> three months later. Um, and we're still working on Eli, getting Eli updated. And at this point, we're Sonia and I are pretty frustrated. Um, and we have let our agency know that, that this is... Uh, this is beyond frustrating to um, to be to get so far and to be, keep making mistakes like this. Um, 
I called the officer at USCIS yesterday and talked with him, and he told me the agency should know that they need to send the entire home study and, and not just the updated portion. Um, and so another delay. I, <clears throat> you know, an, at least another three, two or three weeks delay. Um, so Sonya's been on Facebook. I've been off of Facebook for the most part, but she's been on Facebook and she's telling me that the families who had their trip one in October, like we did, they are already getting their court dates and they're already bringing their children home. And here we are, we haven't even gotten our court date yet. So it's, it's just an incredibly frustrating, uh, process at this point. Um, so at this point we are, we are really hoping for a March court date where she can finally stand in front of a judge and say that she'd like to be adopted and which would give us roughly an April time frame for going back over and, and getting her. So April, uh, June, 2021 will be two years that we've been doing this and it was originally supposed to be 13 months I think I mean it's just COVID mistakes by the agency it's just delay after delay it's just it's just so incredibly frustrating um, in the meantime we still speak with Megan once a week and it's so good to see her um, she's remaining patient she's remaining upbeat and, um, I think she's probably as frustrated as we are. Uh, it sounds like she has asked, um, you know, about the process and, um, you know, why it's taking so long and we can't tell her anything. They can't tell her anything. So she just remains in the dark, uh, throughout all this poor girl. Um, so it's, anyway, that's, that's what's going on. Um, if I get any updates, I'm sure I'll, I'll, uh, keep you posted, but just sitting here waiting, <laughs> waiting for government agencies to, uh, <laughs> get off their duff and work. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm sure they're working hard. I don't want to be too hard on them, but, um, I just know that if I was in the situation of having to process paperwork all day, I probably would not be motivated to do so. But anyway, um, that's it for now. I'll uh, hop on here if I get anything else. Bye.